All right, so in this video, I want to talk about something called a make file and the make utility in Unix. Make files are a really useful construct to have when you're trying to manage a large project, a project that has multiple pieces to it that you need to compile in order to build your executable. So I'm working in a directory with just two C programs. So my main program looks as follows. It um, sets a variable x to 5. It calls a routine called scale, passes x, gets the value back, and then it prints out the value of the argument x and the scaled value y. And scale is just a simple sample program that takes an argument, and in this case it multiplies it by 5. Fairly useless pair of uh, functions here. This is just a demonstration. Now if I want to build an executable version of my main program, the typical way to do it would be something like this gcc-o main main.c scale.c and that gives me an executable I can run and I see that 5 times 5 is 25. Here's the thing, if this is a really large project and I've got a hundred C programs going into it and I change one of those C programs I don't want to execute this GCC command every time I want to rebuild main because this is recompiling all of my C programs. It's only two programs in this case, but again, if this was 100 or 1,000 C programs, you don't want to keep recompiling those. You only want to recompile the ones that change. So here's a better way to build this project. I can say gcc-c main.c, and that leaves me with a main.o. That's a compiled but unlinked main program. And if I say gcc-c scale.c, that leaves me scale.o. That's a compiled but unlinked scale.c. And now when I want to make my main program, I say, say gcc-o main main.o scale.o. And this is a fair bit quicker than working from the .c files because compilation is fairly expensive. Linking can be fairly fast. So in this case, I'm not recompiling anything. I'm just linking these two object files, these 2.0 .0 files. Now, if I want to change my scale routine, so right now my program scales by 5. If I just want to change my scale, here's what I can do. I can change scale.c, and I can say let's return 50 times my input. All I have to do is recompile that, gcc-c scale.c, and then I can go back and link my object modules. And now when I run my main program, it scales my argument by 50. The trick here is that I did not have to recompile main.c because I know as the developer of this code that main.c does not have to be recompiled just because I change scale.c. Okay, the idea of a make file is to take that knowledge that you as a developer have about your project and encapsulate it into a script so that you don't have to think about it and that somebody else who's working with your code doesn't have to think about it. And so this script is called a make file, and the program that processes the make file is just called make. So here's what a make file would look like in this case. So it's usually called make file with an uppercase M, and it's comprised of pairs of lines. The first line begins with what we call a target. This is the name of something that we want to build. In this case, the main program main. That's followed by a colon and then a list of dependencies, files that need to be up to date in order to build this target, main in this case. So main depends on main.o and scale.o. The next line has to begin with a tab. That's very important. Spaces will not work. It's got to be a tab followed by a command that will build main if those dependencies are satisfied. In this case, gcc-o main main.o scale.o. And then we have another pair of target with dependencies followed by a command, target with dependencies followed by a command, and so on. So my next target is main.o. And in order to build that, all I need is main.c. And if I have main.c, here's the command again starting with a tab, gcc-c main.c. The next target I need is scale.o, and that depends on scale.c. And in order to build that, I say gcc-c scale. C. There's my whole make file, so I'm going to save that. Now if I say make, it'll tell me main is up to date. If I remove main, so I have my object files that I'd already compiled, if I say make, it will just do this one command to link those objects together. If I rem remove main, and I remove my object files, so I'm back to just starting with my source code, and I say make, it'll go ahead and it will redo the builds on the compilations of main.c and scale.c, and then it'll go ahead and link these together. 
I'm getting a warning here because I didn't declare the return type of main um, and I didn't prototype scale. So let me go ahead and fix that. Let's make main return an integer and let's put in a prototype um, integer scale int. So we'll prototype that. I've changed main.c, so if I say make, it will recompile main.c. You can see that right here. It doesn't recompile scale.c, and then it goes ahead and links my objects together to make my executable program. If I say make again, it tells me main's up to date. And main right now is scaling by 50, so 5 turns into 250. Now what happens if I change scale.c? I can say vi scale.c. I can change this 50 to, let's just change it to a 2. Now as the developer, I understand I have to recompile scale.c and then I have to relink my objects. But I've already put that in my make file. So if I just say make, it goes ahead, it recompiles scale.c, it relinks my objects. And now I have a new executable that multiplies my argument by 2. So this really speeds up development because after you make a change, you just say make and it goes ahead and does everything it needs to do. If I say make again, it says it's already up to date. And you can make your make file as complex as it needs to be. For example, instead of embedding the scaling factor inside um, scale.c, I might put it inside an include file. And so my scale might depend on some scale.h. And my scale.c program would say something like include scale.h, where scale.h specifies what my um, factor should be. Now, if I say make, it's going to tell me it doesn't know how to make scale.h, and it needs that for scale.o. So I need to actually write my scale.h, and I'm just going to say define factor, uh, let's make it 7. And now if I say make, it'll compile scale.c, it will link my objects, and when I run main, it multiplies my argument by 7. And if I say make again, it says main's up to date. If I change scale.h and make this, uh, let's make it an 8, I can just say make, it recompiles scale.c, it rebuilds main, and main is good to go now. So that's the basic idea of a make file. Again, here's the make file we're working with in this particular uh, instance. And that's, that's pretty much the main idea of a make file. Um, let me show you some of the other things we can do with a make file, though. So one thing you typically find in a make file is what's called a clean option. And here's the idea. Right now I have a main program that's executable. I have two objects, I have two source files, and I have a .h file, and I have my make file. Suppose I put all of this on GitLab, or I tar it up, and I make it available to people, and people download it. And on their system, they say make, and they're going to get exactly what I'm seeing here. It's going to say main is up to date. But I'm running on a 64-bit Intel architecture. What if they're running on a different processor? If they try to execute main, they're going to get an error from their operating system saying it doesn't understand the format. They need to force their system to recompile the C code and then relink the objects. And there's no way to do that right now by just saying make because it thinks everything is up to date. So what can you do? Well, you could go through and you could delete all the object files and you could delete the executable. That would certainly work. Or you could go through and you could touch those files to update the date so it looks like you've made changes to the C programs and to the H file. But if you don't understand how the project is laid out and if it's laid out across lots of different directories with lots of different files, again, that's unclear how to do that in a way that doesn't do any harm but forces everything to be recompiled. But as the developer of the project, you know exactly what has to happen to force a rebuild. So we're going to add a new option to our make file. It's going to be a new target called clean. And we're not going to have any dependencies on this. We're just going to list a command, which is remove main, main.o, and scale.o. So when I say make, it looks at the first target, which in this case is main, and it figures out how to make that 
particular target. But if I say make something, it will look for a recipe with that target. If I say make main.o, it will find this. It will look to see if it has a main.c, and it'll execute this command. So what's going to happen if I say make clean? It's not actually going to build anything named clean. We're tricking the make file and the make uh, tool into saying, OK, I want to build a target clean. Here's the command I need to execute. And it doesn't build anything. It simply cleans up the directory. It removes the things that have already been compiled and linked together so that well, next time we say make, it will force it to redo all of these steps. So now if I say make, again, it says everything's up to date. If I say make clean, it'll remove all of that stuff. And now when I say make, it will redo both of the compilations and the linking of the object files. And we've got our executable. If I say make clean and I say make clean again, I'll get an error the second time because it doesn't have anything to remove. That's okay. Um, it's a little sloppy, but but it does no harm. Um, and we can use make files for more than just compiling C code and linking them together. For example, another thing you find in a lot of make files is an install option. And an install might be used, for example, if you wanted to take the thing that you had made and put it into a system directory. So I'm not going to touch the system directories here, but I'm going to say something like copy main um, to slash temp slash main program. So if I say make install, again, it's going to look for a target named install. It's going to find that, and it's going to execute this command. I'm going to add a dependency here. I'm going to say that for this to work, we need to have main. All right, so we've got this dependency. Um, in order to build our target install, we need to have the program main here. So if I go ahead and exit out of this, And I say make, um, let's go ahead and clean everything. Let's go ahead and say make, let's say make install. What it's going to do is copy my main program into this slash temp slash main program, which is a fictitious uh, common shared area where we might put a program that we finished building and we wanted to make available to everybody on the system. So now anybody in the system can say slash temp slash main program and they can run our main program. Um, and if you do a make clean, in this case, actually all I have to do is say make install. And it will realize that in order to build install, it needs to have main. In order to have main, it needs to have main.o and scale.o. It'll build those, it will link them, and it will copy it. So it does my two compilations here and here. It links them together, and then it copies it into the main program. And if I say make again, it'll say everything is up to date. If I say make install, it'll realize that um, that it has a main program, but it'll still go ahead and copy that into um, a main area because the make files are actually more clever than I've described. When you say make, here's what it does. It not only looks to make sure that we have a main.o and a scale.o, but it makes sure that main is more recent than either of these. If main.o is more recent, it will say, OK, main is stale. I have to rebuild it. It will re-execute this. If I change scale.c or scale.h, that's why it rebuilds scale.o, because it looks at the date on these, and it says this is more recent than the target. So it needs to re-execute the command that it uses to build this target scale.o. So the trick when I'm doing something like make install is that it will look for something named install. It doesn't find it. So it's automatically going to go ahead and check to see if this dependency is satisfied. And if it is, execute this command. So, um, so that's another thing we do with make files. Usually we have a clean option, and sometimes we have an install option. And we're not actually compiling anything there. We're just using make as a way to execute commands. And you can use make files for a wide range of things. For example, if you do LaTeX file processing, you need to uh, take your file. Maybe you want to make a backup of it. And then you need to LaTeX it to create a DVI. And then maybe you want to do DVI PDF. And maybe you want to do some bibliography commands. And you can put all of those in a make file. So that instead of trying to remember all those commands or simply doing all the commands every time, you can just say make. And then if you make a change to your LaTeX file, but you haven't changed the bibliography, it won't rebuild the bibliography every time, and so on. So lots of capabilities with make files. 
All right, so one more thing I want to mention on make files. Um, take a look at our current make file. I have two lines where I'm compiling C code. Suppose I want to compile C code, but I want to include an option on my compiler, like turning on certain levels of warnings, or I want to compile for debugging, say, with a dash G switch. I can go through and I can edit my make file and add a dash G after each GCC, but you don't really want to have to monkey with a make file too much because make files can get very complex, especially if it's not one of your make files. So here's one other option you should know. You can put variables inside make files. So for example, I can add a variable which says GCC switch equals dash G. And when I do my GCC, I can say um, dollar sign parentheses GCC switch. And I can put that in both of my GCC commands. This is dash switch. And I've set my GCC dash switch to be dash G. So when I compile right now, when I say make, this is going to say GCC dash G. And then the rest of this will be the same as it was before. So if I say make, um, let's do a make clean and say make. You can see that it's putting that dash G switch on my two compilations. And now my, uh, my code has been compiled with debugging symbols. So I can go ahead, I can debug this, I can run it, and so on. When I'm done with all that and I decide that my make file is up to date, here's all I have to do to recompile it without that switch. I can just set GCC switch to be empty. And now if I say make clean and I say make, it compiles without that dash G switch. Okay, this is a very, very, very minor discussion of everything that you can do with make files. There's a whole lot more you can do with them. This is a bare bones minimum that you might need just to get a basic make file going, just to speed up some of your development process, um, embed some of your knowledge about how a, uh, an image is built um, inside a single script, a make file, and let you rebuild your project with just make instead of having to type in individual commands. Um, all right, that's the basic deal with make files. Um, hope that's useful to you. Take care. Bye.